Once again, the public come under a vicious attack from yet another WIA government minister masquerading as a people's representative while in reality serving rapacious corporate plunder in the private corporation for trading as the West Australian government. Just the other day, the entire Australian populace uh, endured the contemptuous derision of the WA Minister for Mines, Mr Sean Lestrange, in his ludicrous attempt to dismiss a countrywide fracking protest involving countless thousands from every walk of life right across the nation as a scare campaign. Hot on the heels of this offensive disdain comes the drooling propaganda of the current WA Minister for Health in a pathetically ineffective ploy to convince the public that poisoning public water with the hazardous toxic industrial waste under false pretenses is a good idea. Well, it isn't, and the public know it. The overwhelming majority vehemently opposed to fluoridation are familiar with the fluoridation lies and deceit customarily trotted out in Orwellian doublespeak. The term public health initiative actually translates to mass poisoning. Opponents understand this craven medical mafia's every utter utterance issues from forked and lethally venomous tongues. The Minister for Health's grubby missive did contain one sliver of fact, revealing that anti-fluoridation activists condemned the Department of Health attack dogs who were dispatched to deceive the public in their role as propagandists and outright liars. He pointedly failed to mention that all community attendees at these shambolic sessions were unequivocally opposed to fluoridation, a position solidly reinforced after the medical mafia antics of the DOH disinformation squad. He went on to declare how pleased he was that these poison-pushing ghouls had reassured the public that anti-fluoridation arguments were without foundation. Really? Well, having been one of those activists, be assured that not one community attendee believed a single evil utterance. Why? Because for decades we, along with an ever-increasing numbers, have rigorously studied the medical literature, listened carefully to the presentations of preeminent toxicologists, well-informed dentists, oral hygienists, and the World Health Authorities to discover that the so-called WA government science is the aspect that is entirely without substance. 98% of the world either rejects, abruptly discontinued, or never indulge the unforgivable scam of disposing hazardous toxic industrial waste into public water supplies in the first place. The minister furnishes even more falsehood, claiming that a preceding legitimate consultation process, which, according to disaffected residents, either never took place, or if it did, the community were never advised. What did occur was the secretive introduction of a water treatment plant that the community didn't ask for, don't want, and emphatically reject. The millions of dollars of public money criminally misspent on this malicious evil could have and should have been utilised on something of community benefit. And had the community been properly consulted, this might have been the case. But they weren't. And the loathsome DOH conniving took place behind closed doors and without public consent. More offensive doublespeak comes in the sickening pretense of protecting public health with the disposing of hazardous toxic industrial waste into public water. The obscene absurdity of this evil proposition isn't lost on an ever-growing mass of critical thinkers increasingly disgusted with the corrupt government tyranny. Water fluoridation is a crime against humanity, and all those seeking to unlawfully inflict this human rights abuse upon a fiercely resisting community will face the consequences. Thank you for watching.